Okay. All right. We're live. We're live. Does this seem higher? I feel like I'm down here right now. I think it's just you, dear. I didn't shrink. No, I'm just saying. You just forgot because you were gone for. Nah. Hey, What's Minden. going on, Mendon? Hey, God bless you. I'm sure Jason's there. All right, is Jason with you on that one or is he coming on after a bit? <laughs> God bless you. I'm going to lower this just a tiny bit. There we go. How's that? That's better. Oh, look, you can see my lion picture a little bit in the background. Oh, yeah. That's funny. So awesome. No, it's still weird. Oh, I know what's going on. Got turned around. All right, hold on. I'm going to move some gonna, things. Like, what's going on? All right. Yeah. Ooh. Awesome. Awesome. What does that matter, though? All right. There we go, because I can tilt it down where it's supposed to be. Sorry, I had to adjust a little bit because this thing was off. And I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> we like to have fun, but, you know, bless you guys. It's, I don't know why we're calling it Sunday Stirring, but I like it. Stirring the pot. Yes, yes. So we're going to give a little bit of time for people to pop in. I see uh, people joining on with us. God bless you guys. It's exciting. It's been an awesome Sunday so far. And, you know, of course, anytime good things happen, the bad stuff tries to come up at the same time, right? <laughs> the enemy sure knows how to try to push buttons, but it's in those times that we stay strong and we worship God. And, we say, and not uh, today, Satan. that's right. I don't even give him that much. So, uh,. <laughs> But we bless you guys for coming on. I mean, seriously, it's an awesome thing to be able to plug into you guys, um, you know, and share with you everything that God is doing, not just in the ministry. I mean, you know, of course we like to share the ministry side of things, but we are just more delighted to see the impact that it makes on your lives as you plug in, as you watch, and as you join us. Happy uh, birthday, Yeah. Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dan. Happy birthday to you. I just had to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, so Dan, if you, I mean, those that don't know Dan that are joining us right now, it is Dan Waite's birthday. He popped in on his birthday to join us. We thank you for that. Happy birthday. I hope you're having a blast uh, and enjoying your birthday today. Um, you know, I am, I'm a big believer in birthdays there. <laughs> they are phenomenal. God put you here for a reason, for a purpose. And, uh, you know, um, if he didn't want it, he wouldn't have had you here, right? So God bless you. I hope your day has just been full of blessings and a good time with all that you are with um today oh, so we love you dan <laughs> um so <laughs> so we're excited oh, oh you're you're, you're more than welcome we're excited to be able to plug in with you guys and to join with you all and you all joining with us and whenever we do these broadcasts every thursday and sunday we've been doing them uh you know faithfully the last several weeks um Three weeks? Uh, since know. we started you know the launch of the the announcement of the ministry we've been coming on here after we did the five days in a row we felt led to keep going and keep doing stuff on the broadcast because we know it is impactful for the kingdom of heaven and we want to make sure that anytime that we're we're, we're on this thing we are speaking the, the word we're speaking the truth of the word we're speaking to the hearts of everyone that that comes on you know for those that love the Lord and those that yet do not know the Lord you'll have an ability to plug in and uh, join us and and you know the, i believe the power of god comes right into these homes and into the lives of everybody that watches um, we've seen miracles already we've seen we've seen testimonies already we've seen you know the the things of god happening right on broadcast um and then again after getting testimonies and and so knowing that god is who he is in his word um we can we can basically join together in these things and encourage one another um, you know, even even though it's you know us generally on here and and speaking into your hearts and your lives, it blesses us at the same time because when we see people plugging in, 
when we see you guys sharing these broadcasts, when we see, see other people we've never seen on before coming on and joining us and listening to the Word of God and, and plugging in and partaking even in comments and in testimonies and things they feel to share. I mean, this is all about growing together as a body. And um, so, so we love that and are super excited about it every time we get on uh, stirring the gift of God inside of us to be able to do these things, um, stirring up the faith, stirring up the, the joy, stirring up you know the different fruits that there are, and, um, and allowing God to use us as He wills um, to be able to do these things and to speak into your lives, and not just in your lives, because I'll tell you what, these things are impactful in our, in our lives too, when we're, you know, mm -hmm. I go back and I listen and I'm blessed by my own messages <laughs> because I believe that God gives them to me and I don't remember half of what I say on these messages sometimes, even if I have notes right in front of me, to I, I get an understanding of what I spoke about. But then I go back and watch and my socks get blessed off again because of the power of God just coming through those messages. So it's an awesome thing to be able to be blessed by what God is doing. Amen. So thank you guys for popping in and joining us on Sunday. We like calling it um, Stirring Sunday or Sunday Stirring because of... of the fact that it, it gets just, just you know, if we've had church on Sunday morning with the, with the body and we're coming in here on night, we're stirring up the things of God and ready to go on through the week so that we can go Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and, and then, you know, on our own worshiping God and praising God. If you go to another church on Wednesdays, you're going into another church on Wednesdays and then you're coming here on Thursdays, you're receiving more from God. And that allows us to grow in the things of heaven. Because as we talked about the last time, if we're not growing in the fruits of the Spirit, if we're not growing in the things of God, then we're growing in the things of the world. And, and that's just plain and simple. I mean, we, whatever we put ourselves more into is what we become more of. I mean, that's, you know, um, you know I think that's what a lot of these principles in the Bible talk about and in in the things in the Word of God. You know, so, so I just, I'm glad and I'm excited to see those that are hungry and hungry and thirsty for the things of God keep plugging in and those that haven't heard yet heard and are coming in and plugging in brand new we love it so it's awesome so um, you know we're gonna um, <clears throat> continue to update you guys as as God does things and and stirs things in the ministry as we get closer to launch it's hey it is coming fast and furious it is today the 15th yep four more Sundays and then we start so that's just it's crazy no pressure. <laughs> I'm not pressured I feel the Holy Spirit whenever we talk about it and whenever we gain on we're talking with people we're sharing vision with people we're constantly you know getting it out there the word I mean I, I was on a plane flying back from uh, where was I Spokane Washington as you guys remember on on Thursday I was there and flying back from Spokane didn't talk to the lady half the time that was sitting next to me on the plane. Um, then at the end, you know, she's like, you know, we started talking. She was asking if Denver was, you know, my home. And I said, yeah. She's like, have you been there long? And, you know, I said, not really. I mean, almost three years going into our third year now. And uh, so she's like, well, what brought you to Denver? <laughs> you sure? You I, I was like, well, that's a really long story for us getting ready to deboard. But I will say it in a nutshell is this. God did. And that's why I told her, I said, God brought us to Denver. And, and through a, a chain of events, he opened the doors for us to come here. We're starting a ministry here in August. And she's like, really? And I said, yep, we are. We're starting our ministry. We're already doing a lot of preparations. We're getting ready and we're getting ready to launch this thing August 19th. And she's like, really? And what do you do now? And I said, well, I'm a consultant, you know, for, for a company, you know, called Home Depot, which everybody pretty much knows. And uh, through our brand there, Interline Brands, and and huh, nothing. And uh, <laughs> and so so she's like, wow. She's like, so what makes a person go from consulting in something like Home Depot or whatever to minister? And I just <laughs> looked at her. I said, God, the call of God. You have to be called to minister. You have to be called to step into the things of the ministry. And you got to know that it's God doing it. And so that is why I'm going into this. I've known it since I was a kid. I've been ready and getting ready and getting stable. And God is the one that's orchestrating it. And she's like, wow. And, I, and uh, so she's 
at the end she's like well good luck with it and everything else so i said well you know what you're gonna hear about it guarantee it the way we're doing things is going to be different than any other church around here in denver and i said since denver's your home keep your ears out keep your eyes ready and come see us and i want to see you there she's like i might just do that so so you never know who we can witness and who we can be a light and an example to and uh and even sharing about the ministry you know so anyway enough about that but we were just excited i mean i'm i'm super pumped about it coming soon um so one other thing before we get into the word. So this week we're still going to have Thursday as normal. And it's going to be awesome. And then Saturday, Becky and I and the, and the family, uh, we are going to uh, be flying out to Tampa. And as a lot of you already know, we're going to be getting um, inducted into the ministry. We're going to be getting inducted through um, the, uh, the spiritual umbrella of uh, RMIMA here and we are super excited so we'll be in tampa for the entire week from the 22nd until the 20 or yeah the 22nd until the 29th doing nothing but meetings morning and night plugging in getting into the word of god getting into the things of heaven and we're going to be you know getting all that god has for us we're going to have our hands laid on us to induct us into the ministry and as that happens we know that god is getting ready to do something amazing supernatural super abundant and it's going to explode like a wildfire starting here in denver and so we're excited and um and looking forward to it so we're going to uniquely do this we're not stopping the broadcast we're actually going to add more on so every day that we are there, we're going to pop in. Can't tell you the times, can't tell you because we don't know as far as what all is going to be happening uh, while we're there in the time frames that we're going to have. But we're going to pop in, give you updates, give you things that are going on, what the Spirit of God is doing. We want to encourage you, to bless you, to let you feel the fire of God where we're, where we're at from all the way in, in Florida and all that stuff, right? And so definitely definitely don't want to miss it we'll pop a thing up there to say hey we're live and coming up we're coming on or we'll just show up live and you guys can join in as you do fit uh see fit or whatever and know what's going on in tampa as we're there so it's going to be awesome so every day from starting on sunday um all the way through that following sunday we're going to be on and broadcasting at some point sharing some of the word sharing some of what god is doing in us while we're there um, you know, maybe you're going to meet some other pastors and ministers while we're there as well. So um, we'll bring them up on here and let them speak like a word. I mean, it'll be awesome. Yeah. So so it's going to be a fun time, um, you know, and looking forward to it. And when we come back, man, I'm just all hands on deck. We are ready to go. The website is almost completely up. Um, we should, we should we're, we're going for the end of next week to have our official website up. Um, still some things in the work on that and uh, all kinds of different things on there and, and we'll give shout outs appropriately later on on that kind of thing but but uh, man it's just been awesome so now that that's all out of the way <laughs> I know you guys want to hear the Word of God and and understand some things there I've been stirring and in, 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 hey appropriately named right Sunday stirring I've been stirring in my spirit about a lot of things this week, even as I was in Spokane even and, and in Seattle, Washington this week. I had a stirring in my spirit about different things, and I actually was on, on the phone with one of our team. Um, you know, we were, we were actually um, just talking about different things of God and how He wants to do different things to different people and, and all of that. And God spoke to me, gave me a, an instant right there kind of word. And I want to share that with you today. I think it's going to be an important word because, see, everybody on watching, and again, these comment sections and all these things are on here for Facebook for a reason, so you guys can get involved and in, and in, and in anything that you feel saying amen or want to comment on or a word you get from the Lord or a testimony or any of those things, always pop them up in here and we will definitely acknowledge, give God the praise and honor for any of those kind of things going on and also address anything that you guys have. Uh, coming up prayers or anything like that as we typically do but but how many of you have oftentimes wondered why is it that I kind of hit a spiritual wall I don't know if anybody in here can attest to that <laughs> but there are been there are times that we can hit spiritual walls where it seems like I don't know if you've ever it can equate to running. Um, it, there have been times that when you go on uh, running and exercise. I used to be a personal trainer back in the day, 
and all I ever did was work out and run uh, and do exercises and run six miles a day or, or more sometimes, six and a half miles a day. And I just was all involved in staying in shape. Well, in running, there's a thing called the, the runner's high, which is great for keep on going. Hey, God bless you, Steve. Uh, it's, a, it's a runner's high, so when you get to a certain point of running, man, you just want to launch and go and go and go and go and go. And you just keep going until you, until you don't want to stop. And then you finish your race, right? And that'll preach in and of itself. <laughs> Um, but that's not what we're talking about today. But the, but the part of that run, though, that happens is in a runner's life is they come running, and then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, they hit a wall. Okay, not literally. I mean, if they are, not. if they are, you got to wonder <laughs> what, what they were doing when they hit that wall, <laughs> if they're running. But, but they hit a, a, a mental wall that almost stops them instantly in their run. And that wall is an, an is, is an anxiety. It's a tiredness. It's a, a frustration. It's an ache in the muscles. It's something that will stop them from being able to go forward until they overcome it and they push through and continue on. So so it got me thinking about that because. Because here's the thing, we have spiritual walls that happen, not just us in person, but even churches. Churches hit spiritual walls. I've seen it time and time again and gone into different ministries and I see all of a sudden, it seems like there's something that wants to break, something that wants to give, but for whatever reason, it's like there's a spiritual wall, boom, right there. And nothing's able to push forward because there's a wall blocking the way. And then same thing in our own personal Christian lives, there's sometimes we're walking and we're running the race the best that we can as Christians. And for whatever reason, there's something deep inside of us that wants to push through but can't. So I'm here to tell you today that there's a way to get through all of that. That there is a way to get through this spiritual wall blockage that could keep us from going into the next level of God in all that we do. And I want you guys to be able to break through and have breakthrough in your lives. Because at the end of the day, we want to get everything we can from the Holy Spirit. We want to grow in every way in the fruits and the gifts thereof and go and do a work for Jesus in whatever capacity that is, if we are Christians, right? That's the way it should be. That's the way we should walk. And that's the way we should live. But those walls come and we've got to push through them. So here's what some things that, that I felt like the Spirit was speaking to me on as I was, um, as I was you know, in Washington this week. And uh, it was interesting. <clears throat> I'm going to share a couple of, of, of different scriptures on here. And, uh, and I think you guys will be able to get where I'm going a lot from these scriptures today. But we're going to start in Joshua chapter 7. So... You know, in the Old Testament, a lot of a lot of things happened in the Old Testament before, you know, um, before the New Testament came in place, before Jesus, before the promises, all of these different things. You know, God was a God that did not play, and He still is. He's a God that doesn't play. You know what I mean? He wants us serious. He wants us on fire. He wants us doing things for Him. The grace of God, though, now because of Christ, keeps us from getting killed when we do something wrong. Right? <laughs> I mean, praise God for His mercy and His grace that endures forever. His mercy is new every morning. His grace is, is never ending, you know, and never fails. And, and, um, be, but if, when you think about it, if we were living in the Old Testament time still and the, and the law of God was the same now as it was then, I don't know that any of us would be watching this right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know I wouldn't, because I, I mean, my life before I was the, the before I am the way I am now. Before I was the way I am now, you know, I was a Christian walking my life, and I walked my life with things in the way. That spiritual wall was constant. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. I might have a red mark after that, but I wanted to get the point across 
you know, a lot of times that Christian walk turns into a headbutt into the wall because we don't know what's going on and why we can't figure it out. I can tell you personally from my life because, I mean, I'm transparent. And the reason being because it's going to bring breakthrough to somebody that listens to this. I had a life of sin inside my own Christianity. Ooh, that'll preach. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself, and I'm going to come back to that testimony in just a moment and and let you understand how God shook and changed my life from these things. But here's what I want to get at. So Israel, um, you know, as Moses died, you know, Joshua kind of took over things. He took over the mantle, um, you know, that and, and all the promises that Moses was going to have now became Joshua's. We know the kind of the background in all of that. And Joshua... Uh, was was going out and fighting these battles that God was supernaturally letting them win. Right? <clears throat> so, after a particular battle, there was a, a, a specific thing that happened, and we're going to kind of read up into this, and, um, and I don't want to get ahead of the scripture. So, we're going to start in Joshua chapter 7. But the sons of Israel acted unfaithfully and violated their obligation in regard to the things off limits under the ban, those things belonging to the Lord. So, so kind of backing up in the previous chapters, as they did these war, wars, God specifically commanded, hey mom, God bless you. God specifically commanded the Israelites, when I give you the land, you get rid of everything that, that I tell you to get rid of. And in instances, it was, it was anywhere from women and children to all the stuff, all the, 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 the stuff they can have gained, the gold, the silver, all of this stuff. So God specifically told them to get rid of it all, to get rid of all that junk that was from other things, right? As he gave them, and his, as he gave them the ability to, to win these wars. And so, as we see here, but the sons of Israel acted unfaithfully and violated their obligation in regard to the things off limits under those under the ban, those things belonging to the Lord. It was all to be given back to God, right? For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, from the tribe of Judah, took some of the things under the ban for personal gain. Therefore, the anger of the Lord burned against the Israelites. So, kind of putting, setting the stage here, Achan was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. And what he did was he hid it. And it was not known to any of the Israelites. It was not known to Joshua at the time. So Joshua, in verse 2, it says, sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Haven, east of Bethel, and said to them, go up and spy out the land. So the men went up and spied out Ai. Then they returned to Joshua and said, do not make all the people go up to fight. Have only about 2,000 or 3,000 men go up and attack Ai. Do not make the entire army go up there, for they of Ai are few. So we're talking about a very limited number of people against the children of Israel at that point. And, and so as they spied out the land there, basically they're saying, hey, we can take them with just a couple thousand men. We'll take them. They're very few. No problem, right? So about 3,000 men, in verse 4 says, from the sons of Israel went up there, but they fled in retreat from the men of Ai. <laughs> They fled in retreat from the men of Ai. The men of Ai killed about 36 of Israel's men and chased them from the gate as far as the bluffs of Cherubim and struck them down as they descended the steep pass. So the hearts of the people melted in despair and began to doubt God's promise and became like water disheartened. Woo! So what happens when we go through something? When we have something that we can't figure out? What happens when we start hitting a spiritual wall? What happens when we start going along this thing and we're not really looking at things that are going on uh, in, in areas that we should or we're hiding something in sin or we're looking at something that we shouldn't do, right? And all of a sudden we're hitting this spiritual wall and we're going, oh man, I can't figure out, God, what is going on. And what happened here is in despair, we begin to doubt God's promises. In despair, we begin to think, oh, man, maybe maybe this is not for me. Maybe healing's not for today. Maybe prosperity's not for today. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm not really called to ministry. Maybe I'm not really a Christian. 
Anybody feel like that before? <laughs> I'll give the time lapse a second for anybody to raise their, their spiritual hand, right? So if you're hitting a wall and, and, and you can't figure out what's causing that wall, you begin to doubt God's promises and you can't understand why God is not doing what he said he was going to do according to your standards. And what you're, not, you're wondering, what, is the, what in the world? Why can't I push through? And you begin to doubt and you become to be like, like water disheartened. Then Joshua... In verse 6 says, He tore his clothes and fell face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening. And he and, he and the elders of Israel, with great sorrow, they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought this people across the Jordan at all? Only to hand us over to the Amorites to destroy us. If only we had been willing to live beyond the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say now that the army of Israel has turned back in retreat and fled before the enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land were, were, will hear about it and will surround us and cut, a, cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do for your great name and keep it from dishonor? So Joshua, a couple things here. He began to go, God, what is going on? Why is this happening? What's going on? Why are we fleeing from enemies? People are going to begin to hear it, and now they're going to doubt the things of God, and they're going to destroy us because of it. And it's going to basically make you look bad, God. And what will you do for your great name to keep it to dishonor? So he was like, kind of like, and I've been there myself. God, I'm telling you, you need to show yourself real in this thing because if you don't do it in our lives, then nobody's going to believe it. They're going to start doubting you, God. What is your name in all of this? Come on. You know, we have all been there before and start putting it back on God like he's got to do something. It's his name. It's his thing. Because see, understand this. Joshua didn't know what's going on and didn't know Achan had done something at that point, right? And so Joshua was, I mean, he... Man of God was praying, trying to push through, trying to figure it out, hitting walls and couldn't figure it out. So he's trying to, whatever, God, what's going on? Is it you? Is it us? Is what? What's the deal? What's your name? What's in your name? What are you going to do to keep this from dishonoring you? So the Lord said to Joshua in verse 10, get up. Why is it that you have fallen on your face? Israel has sinned. They have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have even taken some of the things under the ban, and they have both stolen and denied the theft. Moreover, they have also put the stolen objects among their own things. That is why the soldiers of Israel could not stand and defend themselves. Before their enemies, they turned their backs and ran before them because, of they, because they have become accursed. I will not be with you anymore unless you do destroy the things under the ban from among you. So I'm starting to catch something here, and I don't know if you guys are, but God, as you know, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His anointing is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What His Word says is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if things arise in our lives that cause us to sin against Him, and we do not repent and we do not go away from that stuff, then we, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He will not be with us anymore unless we destroy the things from under the ban. Woo, this is deep. This is deep. Because I know a lot of you have been coming and joining us, right? A lot of you have been coming on and watching us preach the gospel and preach the things and the prosperity and preach the exciting stirring of the Holy Spirit and all the good fruits thereof and all the gifts thereof and all the things that we can attain thereof by the gift of God, by the Holy Spirit, and by all the wonders that the Lord can do and the greater works that He can do to draw people to Him. But if we have sin in our lives, if we have things blocking us, if we're hit or walls constantly we're never going to see any of that happen and take place because god will not be with us preach 
Woo! That's good stuff. Mm, thank you, Lord. Oh, woo! Shambre, Baba, Sunday. Hallelujah. We got to destroy those things that would stop the work of God from manifesting in our lives. We've got to say no to sin. We've got to say no to temptations. We've got to say no to the lies of the enemy. We've got to say no to anything and everything that would try to stop us from walking a walk in Christ in victory and in ability to be prosperous and do the things that God said we can do. Amen? Amen. So I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy the things under the ban from among you. Rise up, consecrate the people, and say, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, These are things under the ban among you. O Israel, you cannot stand victorious before your enemies until you remove the things under the ban from among you. In the morning you shall come forward by your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord chooses by lot shall come forward by families and by and the family which the Lord chooses shall come before by separate households and the household which the Lord chooses shall come forward man by man it shall be that the one who is chosen with the things under the ban shall be killed and his body burned with fire and he and all that belongs to him because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and began he, because he has done a disgrace and a dis, disobedient thing to Israel that's why I said, thank the Lord, thank the Lord that we are under grace and all the working of what Jesus did when he died on the cross for us. Because if it had not been for that, we would be burned, we would be killed, we would be thrown into a fire, we would not be here today. But because of the grace of God, we have the ability through Jesus Christ to say, hey, these things were sin in our life, but they are sin no longer. We can say these things have trapped us up, and they will trap us no longer. We now can say no to the things of the world, and yes to the things of Jesus, and get rid of the junk. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is real on this thing. He wants us holy. He wants us separated. He wants us set apart and chosen for the things to come. Amen. And getting rid of the junk is where it starts. So the sin of Achan was this. So Joshua got up early in morning and had Israel come forward by tribes. And this is verse 16. And the tribe of Judah was, was, cho was chosen by Lot. He and the families of Judah came forward and the family of Zerahites was chosen. And he had, the he had the family of the Zerahites come forward by the man Zabdi was chosen. He brought his household forward by man, by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, and the tribe of Judah was chosen. Then Joshua said to Achan, and I got to stop right there before we go on. See, here's the, the interesting thing of all of this. What happens when we start to address sin? It does not like to come to light. But be sure known that your sins will find you out. And your sin will come to light, especially as the things of heaven come in place. Because nothing in darkness can stay in the light. Amen. And he, so, so Joshua said to Achan, My son, I implore you, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give praise to him in recognition of his righteous judgments. And tell me now that what you have done. Do not hide it from me. <laughs> Reminds me of a kid, you know, being a kid. You as parents can understand this. I mean, I don't know if this ever happened. My mom probably can attest to it on here. But, but I'll tell you what. Right now, when the Spirit of the Lord comes on, um, amen. That's right. That's, That's right. right. So when, when kids are doing something they shouldn't be doing, you know, you can be led by the Spirit of God to know when they did something wrong. And so when you come up to them and like, what did you do? And they're like, how do you know? Yeah. So this is what happened with uh, Achan. Do not hide it from me. So Achan answered Joshua and said, 
In truth, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils of Jericho a beautiful robe from Shinar, southern Babylon, and took and 200 shekels of silver and bar of gold, weighing 50 shekels, I wanted them and took them. Behold, they are hidden in the ground inside my tent and the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent and saw, saw, they saw stolen objects hidden in this tent with the silver underneath. And they took them from the tent and brought them to Joshua to, this, to the, all the sons of Israel and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the sons of Zerah, the silver, the royal robe, the bar of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and everything that he had. And they brought them up to the valley of Achor, which means disaster. That's interesting. Joshua said, why have you brought disaster on us? The Lord will bring you disaster this day. Then Israel will stone them to death with stones after they burned their bodies in fire they were piled up over him a great heap of stones that remain to this day the lord turned the fierceness of his anger therefore turned from the fierceness of his anger therefore the name of the place has been called the valley of acor and which means disaster to this day that's cool I know. so again thank the lord for the grace thank the god thank god that we're not living in the days like this when our sin and when it is found leads to our death now to where then after is judgment thank the lord that that is not the case now all sin still leads to death be assured of that every sin leads to death if it is taken root and is grown the bible is clear that it leads to death but if we have the opportunity now which we do to repent and to turn from the sins that got that that have kept us from going forward past this wall then we will be able to move pressed in pressed over and keep on going into the things that all of heaven has for us because then we are truly living in the righteousness of God amen it's good stuff hallelujah hallelujah And Romans makes it clear, Paul speaks about this in, in chapter 6. It says, what shall I say to all of this? Should we continue in sin and practice sin as a habit so that God, God's gift, grace, may increase and overflow? Certainly not. How can we then, we, the very ones who died in sin, continue to live in it any longer? See, the, the fact of the matter is, is there are going to be things that come and try to trip us up all the time and try to keep us from the things of heaven and try to keep us from getting under the Holy Spirit to try to keep us from growing in the things of God so that we can press on, so that we can operate in greater work, so that we can lead others to Jesus, so that we can live a true Christian life. But we've got to learn how to understand, recognize it and get rid of that sin so that our sin does not lead to death and, and we will be able to press on in Jesus. Amen? And press on in the things of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God's grace is, yes, it's sufficient. God's mercy is new every morning. But just as Paul said in here, it's certainly not. We don't have that ability to just sin and have it to keep on getting from the God's grace and, and increase and overflow. You know, yes, we can continue to receive grace, but we have got to learn how to get rid of the junk so that we can move forward. There are times that I've, I've, I've been speaking, I was just speaking with my friend this week, again, on, on our team, and I was just talking about this is some things that hold back the body of Christ. Because see, our sin will stop the flow of God from happening just as it did in the whole children of Israel and the whole people of Israel. It stopped God from doing what he could do in, in protecting his name, as Joshua said. It prevented God from doing that for the entire nation of Israel because of one man's sin. So imagine if a church is trying to plug into the things of heaven. Imagine a church that's trying to break through into the things of God. Imagine a pastor that's preaching his heart out and trying to pour into people. And all of a sudden it's like this constantly. 
constantly, constantly. The pastors are button heads. The pastors are button into the walls with their heads. And they're constantly trying to push through because they want to hunger, they hunger and thirst for the things of God, but they can't figure it out. They're tearing their clothes, praying in power for you, praying for their church, praying and saying, God, we don't understand what's going on. We can't push through. Something's causing us not to break through and something's stopping us from doing this. It's because there's something in the way and that way is called sin. I call things out. I will speak things in love, but I will call things out in a heartbeat. When there are things that are not being allowed to happen in, in the Spirit of God, it's because of the fact there are things blocking it. And those things need to be removed. Amen. Amen. And when those things are removed, then the Spirit has free reign. Then God has ability to take place and do what He wants to do and move in power. Great things and great, and great anointing. Amen. Amen. See, I, I'm telling you right now, it reminds me of that movie Spider-Man with great power comes great responsibility. See, in my life, and I wanted to come back to that in the testimony of my life, I've been saved since I was since I was five years old. And, he, and in a lot, I think in the beginning of this thing, when we start, first started out, I shared that I became, I became a Christian when I was young. I understood the things of God, had a, a heavenly vision, got baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was seven, speaking in tongues. Fire of God fell on me again when I was 13 in a, in a tangible, heat-stricken way that has never left me since. Well, I will say this, it has left me, okay? It was never fully gone, but it was muted. Just as God said, I cannot. And when he told the children, the children of Israel, when he told Joshua, I cannot do anything till you get rid of this, this sin, right? When he told them, I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy the things under the ban from among you. I had personal things in my life. I was addicted to pornography. I was in lust. I was following after that junk for years and years and years. And my wife knows it. That's why, I mean, honey, I hope you're okay with me sharing. It's too late. But I was. I was. And I'm saying that because there could be people that have had that same issue, that, that dealt with that. Or there may be somebody coming on to watch this. God specifically told me when he set me free from that. When he specifically told me that I would be bringing freedom to those captives. He specifically showed me that I would be bringing that, 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 oh, what is that word? Deliverance. That, yeah, basically that deliverance to people that dealt with the same type of issues in their own personal lives. All right. It doesn't matter the circumstances and the situations that brought me to that point in my life. The fact of the matter was, is that it was sin that took place. It was sin that got in. And no matter how much I love the Lord, no matter how much I wanted to press through, I couldn't. Because of the things that I was allowing to happen in my life that did not let me push through. And it wasn't until I said enough is enough of that junk that God came and intervened and then he took it out and then we came on and then God really got a hold of me in his spirit and then God shook me and now the rest is history. And now we're moving and shaking and we're doing things for heaven and we're speaking to you guys and we're plugging into the things of, the, of God because we know that God is greater, that God has now removed the wall that would block the things of the Spirit and His true calling was never gone. His true calling was without repentance. Amen? His true calling was that we would go and do these things and now we're able to do it in freedom, in actuation, and full of the anointing and the power of the Most High God and in all that the Holy Spirit will give us to do. Amen. Amen. And there is no going back from that after that. You can't tell me that when you get in the anointing of God and when you're flowing in the things of the Spirit and when you get a taste of those things that going back to sin is okay. It's not. So getting rid of it, because otherwise you're just going to hit another wall and you'll never be able to, pro to, to produce or grow in the things of God until that wall comes down again. And who wants to keep headbutting a wall? Because eventually it hurts. <laughs> eventually. Eventually it's going to hurt. 
You're going to knock yourself out. Give yourself brain damage. Give yourself brain damage. Amen. Say no to the things of the world. Saying no to sin. Saying no to the flesh. Saying no to the things that would stop us from being able to press forward in God. Amen. Amen. Daily, you're yeah, absolutely right, Dave. The flesh and, the, and but see the Bible also says that we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but by but uh, against, principalities. against principalities and powers of the air. Right. So so it's not that 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 uh, we don't really have to fight it when it comes down to it. When we say no and when we really mean it. See, see, the thing is, is sometimes you have to wonder because people I, I've had struggles with people in their theology that believe once saved, always saved. Because the fact of the matter is, is you can lose your salvation if you die to sin. Right. Die from sin. Die from sin. I'm saying die to sin, meaning <laughs> by meaning dying from sin. Because right. if the sin takes your body, takes over your life, and eventually the wages of sin thereof are death. And death, when it has completed its work, I mean sin, when it's completed its work, leads to death. Amen. But the grace of God abounds. As long as we are continuing to walk in Him. So the moment we become Christians doesn't mean that we're going to stay in Christ. And that we're going to be saved all of our days unless we get rid of the sin. We are secured in eternity. We are secured in Him as long as we get rid of the sin. As long as we press on towards the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so I want you to be encouraged by that. If you're hitting walls, it's not okay but it's okay, because understand this, recognize and say, God, I can't understand why I can't push through, but now after hearing this word, I will be able to learn what I need to get rid of in order to press through. So what if it's holding you back? For me, it was lust and pornography, right? But for others, it could be addictions. To, that's what the word, the word of the Lord came to me and said that I was going to be breaking addictions off of people. So we're going to pray for that today, because it could be addictions in the simplest things. That we don't even realize that can lead to sin. Anything that be takes the place of the Lord leads to sin. Right? So, so that in itself, and we want to break those things off of our life that would keep us from Him. And so any, it, it could be any kind of addiction. It could be any kind of, of, of sin. I mean, it could be uh, you know, lying. It could be, I mean, there's multitudes of things that even as Christians we can be exposed to and that could take place if we're not careful. And so let's just determine today in our hearts, in our lives, that we are going to press through crushing the walls, not climbing over them, not, not battering them at, with a, a, a bat until we can get a hole big enough to squeeze through. Let's crush those walls. Let's get rid of the junk. Let's get rid of the things that the God would have us to get rid of. And let's press on so that we can be, we can be fully infused and, and God help me with the word ingrained with all that heaven has. When I pray to the Holy Spirit, when I pray to God, you can, if you can see my own personal life in the prayers that I pray now, man, I get so on fire for God. I, I'm like, God, I want all of the Holy Spirit. I want all that you can pour. Everything. I don't care if it feels like I'm going to die. I want it all. And I want it now. <laughs> I want it all. <laughs> Come on, we want to get all that heaven has for us. We want to get all that righteousness inside of us. We want to have all that we can and move and flow in the Holy Spirit for the end time harvest so to be great in Jesus name. Amen. So we want to see souls get saved. We, I want a million souls at the minimum in my own personal account for Jesus. That's not saying what this ministry itself will do at some point. I know ministers right now in, in, in Florida, in Tampa, 15 million souls to count since the time of this ministry, right? Of their ministry. 15, actually, it's over 20 million. It's 15 since they started these things called Great Awakening Tours. 
where they would go from city to city and do revival and revival and get soul saved going out on streets of cities. That's a lot like we're planning to do in this ministry. We're starting in Denver. We're starting to preach in the city, but we're going to go multitude, multiple places and, and we're going to be preaching all throughout this city, seeing this city on fire for God, seeing this city touched for God, seeing souls come to the salvation of the Lord. There's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in Denver, if not a million or so, that need the Lord Jesus and all the power and authority and the, uh, the Holy Spirit to come upon them to change and touch their lives. And they're hungry and they're thirsty and they need somebody to tell them. And so we're going to do that. And then we're going to bring it out into the state of Colorado. And then we're going to bring it out into the country of the U.S. And then we're going to bring it out into the different surrounding countries. And then we're going to see this world shaken. Not just our ministry, but other ministries that are doing the same exact thing out there. Plugging in day and night, night and day, after week, after week, after week. They're plugging in, they're pressing in. You're going to see a powerhouse. Well, I'm prophesying right now that when we come back from Florida, you are not, you haven't even seen the very crest of what God is going to do through this ministry. You haven't even seen the beginning works of what God is going to do through this ministry. Lives are going to be touched. Lives are going to be changed. You think you feel the power of God when I speak now. Get Just wait until the power of God comes fully upon us. Just wait until you sit in your homes and you sense the very fire of God coming through this screen to your lives. Touching and changing you because of all God has done in and through us. Amen. Amen. And it is going to be powerful. It's going to be impactful. It's going to be so much to the point when we're walking by people, lives are changed. That the anointing and God is going to do something huge. Why? Because souls need it. Souls need it. Because there is coming a day when we won't be able to do this anymore. There is coming a time when the, the heavenly curtain is being pulled down and Jesus is coming to say, that's it. Let's go. And when that time comes, we won't be able to preach it to anybody anymore because we're going to be taken in the air. So if you don't know Jesus, today is your day to know him. If you don't know the Lord, today is your day to know Him. If you're watching this and you're not sure that if today was your last day on earth, that you would be in heaven with Jesus, be assured that today you can know that. You can know that, that the sin that held you back and was hitting and making you hit walls is no longer a sin that needs to take place in your life in the name of Jesus any longer. I command and I bind those things in the name of Jesus. So right now, if you're watching this, right now, if you would say to me, you know, Elliot, I have something in my life that I need to get rid of. That is causing me to be spiritually held back then I want you to, is right where you're at. If you're in a public place, oh well, pray it right where you're at. Because God did everything He did for us publicly. He was humiliated, He was crushed, He was bruised, He was broken. Spit on. All the hairs on His head, uh, were, I mean all the hair, hairs on His beard, the crown of thorns on Him. Publicly He was humiliated. So if you're in a public place, we can pray. If you're at home, we can pray. So let's pray right now. If you say that I'm not sure uh, that, that today would be my last day, if I would be in heaven, or I'm, I have this struggle that I'm dealing with that right now I need to get rid of, then we're going to pray this prayer, and I want you to repeat it after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for all that you do in my life. I ask you to forgive me of every failure, of every situation, of every circumstance, of things that I let in my life take place of you. 
I thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I can be free from sin. And in Jesus' name, I confess that you are Lord of my life. That what you did on the cross, dying for my sin and raising again three days later, was so that I could have a home in eternity with you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you for forgiving me. And thank you that right now I am set free. In the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, you don't have to publicly put it on here. I'm not going to, I don't, I'm, I don't believe in embarrassing people. If you want to, you can. But listen, I want to hear from you. Email us because we will pray for you specifically. We'll put you in our prayer list. We'll put you on in, in notice that God will continue to work in and in, in your lives to set you free from whatever it is that you need to be free from. Amen. So email us at info at W-O-L-M-I-N-T-L dot com. Info at W-O-L-M-I-N-T-L dot com. And I promise you that we will be praying. If you need us to contact you, we'll call and pray for you. All right? right. So I'm just telling you, this this is getting real, people. Not just in our own lives for this ministry. And for what God's getting ready to do in August. But if God is doing something as big as he is planning to do. And if, if, if again, if we talk about all the time in Ephesians that it's, it's, if it's bigger than, than us. If it's bigger than us, it's God. If, we can, if it's bigger than we can ask, think, or imagine, then it's God. And he can do even bigger than that. Then you better get ready. You better get ready. Because the way I see things coming, our time is coming very close. The way I see things, the way I imagine things, the way I can sense things in the Spirit of God, I'll tell you what, it's getting close. So get yourselves ready and get people ready. Tell as many people as you can about Jesus because we're all ministers of the gospel. We're all people that are chosen by God when we become saved to tell others about Him. Amen. Amen. So I definitely want to make sure you guys are, are able to get everything you can out of these times when we're together. And, and I love every single one of you for coming on. We thank you for being a part of this thing because this is, this is amazing what God is doing, what he's going to continue to do. And, and yes, definitely share, like Dave said, share the ministry. Share the ministry with others. I want to scroll back down here because I thought something else was uh, brought up. I don't know if it was a comment, a prayer, or whatever, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. We are all we are not all preachers, but we are all called if we are a Christian. God made us and knows us and he can equip us. Amen. See, I was already saying that. I didn't even see that come by there. I was trying to read it. But you know that the, that and that's so true. Share the ministry. Get people involved, you know, with what we're doing. You know, uh, because it, it takes I mean, it takes a lot, a lot as we see the financial needs coming up. You know, it's so easy in the flesh. It's so easy in the flesh to just think about all the financial things and say, God, oh man. My flesh even tried to come up and say, God, I'm, <laughs> are you sure? Are you really sure about all this that you're showing me? Are you really sure about all of this? Because man, there's really no going back now. We started this thing, you know? And then I'd get drunk in the Holy Ghost, and then I'm okay, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So, so you know, it's bigger than us, so we stay drunk in the Holy Ghost. We straight stay drunk and filled with the fire of God. We stay plugging into the things of heaven, and the moment when the flesh starts to get weak, we press in even harder, and we press in even more. And that's the way this lifestyle is from here on out, and it has to be if we're going to do anything of the capacity that God is putting on our hearts to do. And knowing that when we look at the finances, when we look at the the things of this nature, continue to pray for us. Continue to pray for this ministry. Share this ministry, as Dave Wilson mentioned just a moment ago. Um, 
begin uh, make sure that you you share this ministry because you know it, it getting the word out about this ministry and what we're doing will let others know how they can also partner with us how they can see the vision of this thing happening and knowing that when they give they're given to good ground or when they sow they're sowing the good the good seed however you want to say it now, there's all kinds of names and terminologies we can use for giving right donations Click the hashtag donate. Love gifts. Haven't figured out the hashtag donate <laughs> thing, but we will. Love gift. But the love offering, the love <laughs> gift, whatever it is, come on. Just in all seriousness, whatever God puts on your hearts, whatever you know you you do, we thank you guys for that and sowing into this ministry. We thank you for plugging into this ministry and allowing us to to share the word of God with you guys for pulling of the Holy Spirit. Because when you guys do, this is what happens. The power of God comes through and we see amazing things and amazing, amazing testimonies. I mean, I would do this in a heartbeat every day of my life for free if I could, right? And God knows it. And But he also knows that we, we're commissioned to do this thing and he will provide it and he will continue to bring in the funds for it. He wants us to test him. It's okay to understand your walk and him confirm it. it off like that. I do it all the That's time. Yes, we appreciate. Yeah. We we certainly appreciate the the, the prayers God. and um, and all the of that. Come when we are blessed. On yep. The end Amen. Of the and so so you know confirmations have been coming so many different ways. Even members from our team that are on here Sing this evening Becky. <laughs> to expand God's kingdom. Sing something, Becky. <laughs> Awesome, Donna. You are so me a funny. Request and I'll sing it next time. No, no, no. Text the request now. Make no. her sing, Donna, because she is amazing. I know. I want her to. I want her to sing on this thing. You know. Um, Only if you sing back, Donna, <laughs> then I will. Hey, Donna, we can bring you on, and you guys can sing a duet together you can sing via Skype or something. Did you know that I can bring you on here? You can request for me to be have you put put on here, and you guys can sing a song together. In fact, you can get uh, Christina on here too, and we all, you know, guys do a, a do a, a trip a tri trio trio, or trio. we can do a quartet. I'll sing in there if my voice can take it. But <laughs> oh, even Dave saying sing, sing, sing. You know, and it's so funny. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> you're, you're hilarious, Donis, man. But you're a great voice. You got a great voice. But yes. you know, um, oh man, I forgot what was going on. So confirmations. So Maria was talking about confirmations happening. Even uh, even some of our team that are on here watching this right now were blessed by confirmations, showing them that they were making the right move in the step of coming on board with us. And it's just amazing how God has just been positioning things and. Uh, and getting and getting people ready and prepared because it's going to be awesome and we know god is going to move in it and have no doubts again it's just whenever the flesh arises we tell it to shut up and we just get drunk in the holy ghost and pray <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um before we head out for the evening let it let's let's pray i want to um i want to open it up if you have a prayer request right now um we prayed specifics for for god to break things off of lives we prayed for those that you know needed to reaffirm their salvation and those that need to to get saved to pray but let me tell you right now if you um if you have anything specific you need prayers on right now go ahead and post it up there and we will pray for it right now we will we will join together as a body of believers and let god do an amazing work god bless you too steve jason gavin good to see you we love you guys focus please focus please uh -huh. Oh, wait. I think he means like when what you were saying. He was commenting on it because we're delayed. Remember a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. And you got lost your track of thinking. I don't remember what my track of thinking was. You, you got back on. You're oh, right. I did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a seven or eight second oh. delay. I noticed that when I was watching you guys Thursday. That it was your you see our comments later than we actually. Oh, oh, okay. So no, Do Do Donis isn't telling me to. Oh. He's not telling me to Sorry. focus on what I was saying. I thought you meant for Sorry, me to I focus on what I was saying. <laughs> we gotcha. Let's pray for focus. Let's pray for focus for Donis. You know, um, you're a great man of God, Donis, and I know that God is working with you. And we're gonna pray for Maria as well. Rib. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're gonna pray for Donis for focus. We're gonna pray for Maria for a rib. Okay. Yeah, I know all about the bruised ribs and the broken cracks and all that stuff. I did that, and it was amazing pain and and uh, the breathing and all that stuff hurts when that stuff happens. So, so let's do this. First of all, Father, 
In Jesus' name right now, I lift honest to you. Okay, We understand that focus needs to come in any and all circumstances. When we're busy with the things of this world and the things of life and the things that come our way, God, it can easily happen to where we can lose track and have our focus taken from us on what you're wanting us to do in, in situations, in any given situation. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I speak clarity over Donna's. I speak clarity right now. Yes, Lord. To begin to come into Donis' life, that your spirit would just begin to speak with him, to show him a laser focus on the things of what you're calling him to do or what you're wanting him to do. Hmm. So right now, Lord, I thank you that Donis is, is, is getting dumped on by your spirit. I thank you that you're pouring it in him right now. Hmm. I thank you, Lord. <laughs> I thank you, Lord, that his strength is renewed. And I feel honest, I felt like I feel like God was just showing me that you were getting weary about something. That you were getting a little bit downstraught about something, that you're weary. That you're just that's the word that's coming to my mind. That you were weary on something. But he's saying to you that joy is gonna be your portion. That strength is gonna be your portion. And that there is a certain something that he has put into your mind a few times. That as you had them come in your mind, they were almost snatched out by other things getting in the way. But if you will fine tune that focus back on those things, joy will be your portion. Do not be weary because joy will be your portion. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in his life right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we come against the pain right now that Maria is experiencing in her rib. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let it be made whole. That recovery, no problems in breathing, no problems in pain. The, even the bruising will subside in a quick manner in the name of Jesus. Let it be healed. Let it be touched. Let there be no other implications in the name of Jesus. Yes, healing come right now Amen. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Anybody else have some prayer requests? Pray. I'm telling you, the power of God is in here. Nothing of our own accord, nothing that we do. It's all through Jesus. It's all through Him. It's all through His work. See, on the cross, He was broken so that we would be healed from anything. That is why Maria can go and walk now in healing in Jesus' name. That is why, Dave, even that, that, that ear is being made whole in Jesus' name. Even a stiff neck that seems like no big deal is being touched right now <laughs> in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whew. I'm getting dumped on right now myself. Hallelujah. Anybody else? 
Hallelujah. It's hard when we can't see you guys because I'm telling you, I, I would, I'm sensing stuff. Hmm. I even sense a vertebrae being touched right now. It's almost like it's being realigned. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If that's you right now, lift your hands and receive it of the Lord. If that's you right now, that vertebrae, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for that healing complete in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's eyes have been causing them problems. <laughs> Woo, it just keeps coming to me, I'm telling you. Somebody's eyes have been causing them problems. Jesus' name. Be healed. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Whoo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. How many sense the presence of God right now as you're watching this? Somebody's been struggling. Um, they've been struggling about church. They don't know. They don't know whether they should go. They've been. They've been hurt. They've been. They've been bothered. They don't know whether they should go to church just in general. Okay, I'm not I'm not talking about a direction of a specific church. I just feel like they somebody here has been torn. They had they don't know. They love the Lord. They want all that God has for them. And I tell you that today, this day, if you will plug in and listen to the Holy Spirit and do what He tells you to do, you will be changed. And it won't just be a temporal change, it'll be a permanent change. In Jesus' Amen. name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whew. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! I think I'm getting Jonas's joy right now. <laughs> Woo! Mm. Hallelujah. The glory of God is real. The power of God is real. The presence of God is real. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just talking to God for a second. He's doing things. I sent, oh man, I'm telling you, I sent a whole lot of stuff. Uh, hmm. Dan, I know it's your birthday. I know it's your birthday, and I, I believe the Lord is speaking to me, saying He's getting ready to multiply and increase the abundance of His anointing in what He's given you in talents and abilities. He's getting ready to multiply and increase. In the anointing that when you play the guitar, where every time you strum that guitar, it'll be like a healing fire that pierces the hearts of those that were hurting, those that were sick, those that were bruised by religion. 
Hallelujah. 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 Brahma, 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 Sam Brahma, Sindhiri, Shtenide. Ingvar Brahma, Sindhiri. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, thank, thank you, you, Steve. We definitely appreciate the sowing and the and the uh, faithfulness that you have in, in your giving. And God is going to honor that immensely. He will immensely begin to pour out. Share testimonies of things in your own personal life even. Because I, I know your heart in the giving to support this ministry is amazing. We appreciate that. And I pray that God will supernaturally, even this week, abundantly bless you even more of an increase, even more of an increase, so that there are things that you personally have been praying about and you have been desiring, God will meet those desires. Right. There is something specific that you have on your heart, on your mind, that God said, I see it and I will honor it and I will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Can't help but get in the presence of God and things shake. Can't help but get in the presence of God and it turns things around in our lives. Can't help but get in the presence of God and see the awesomeness of who He is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm just, mm, I'm just feeling the presence. I'm telling you, it's awesome, awesome things. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, mm. so I know Maria specifically my mother as those of you don't, don't know so i can respect her and honor her in the way that she needs to be mother is my mom has been uh, praying for uh, for boldness in souls and like maria has been praying for boldness to be able to speak to people about jesus i actually felt a stirring right there then and there, that she's not the only one, but that in the next 30 days, some 60, and even some 90, in the next 30, 60, and 90 days, there's going to be such an increase and a passion for the loss that is going to touch and change you that you're going to not be able to count on your hands the number of souls you've been able to lead to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus, for souls. We praise you, Lord, for boldness. We praise you, Lord, that you put a holy fire for lost in these people today in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for divine appointments that they will know that it is you and that they with all boldness will be able to speak to those about Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the harvest of souls coming in in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that in the next 30, 60, and 90 days there will be hundreds coming to the Lord in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify you because we know that all heaven rejoices we know that all heaven rejoices when one sinner comes to repentance. Hallelujah! It is not one, but hundreds I hear in the name of Jesus. Hundreds in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Glory to God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for souls. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for our holy boldness to preach the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for divine appointments. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! We thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Whew. Whew. 
Hallelujah. We, we receive that in Jesus' name. The blessings of the Lord, the favor, the rich favor of the blessings of God on us and our family. Amen. In the spiritual as well as the financial, we're praying. We're believing God for big things. I tell you right now, and I don't care if they watch. I mean, you know, I mean, I have uh, some of my friends on Facebook are, are people I work with. So be it. I really don't care because God is bigger than it all anyway. But I'm really believing God that soon, that soon, the financial provision in our own personal life is going to free me up from Home Depot so that I can do this and focus on this in the power and the authority and the great and the grace and the ability that God is is really wanting to push out there. You know, I was telling my wife we're not going to take a step of uh, we're not going to take a step that God doesn't ordain. You know, so if He tells me to do it, I would do it in a heartbeat. But I'm telling you, there's certain things that we're praying that in, in just like, you know, there was a fleece in the Old Testament laid out before God to give him the understanding of what to ways to do the things. You know, we have no problem stepping out in faith when God warrants it. But we also know that we got to use wisdom in our finances and stuff like that. So we're praying, we're believing. So if in your personal, in your prayer time for us in our ministry, also pray in our personal lives, we are believing God to pour in financially the blessing that in the number that God gave us so that I can leave what I'm doing now full time and be able to full time commit to this and do real estate part time in the sense that will provide our finances. And, and, um, and we know God is going to do it. We know He's faithful. We're trusting in Him. We're relying on Him because, man, we when we, we do this with all of heaven behind us, it is going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing. And we're excited about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glorify Jesus. Amen. I believe it. I receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Father, I, I thank you so much for everybody who's plugged into this thing. I mean, we've had some awesome viewers on this thing already. People coming in and watching and staying on because they're sensing the power and the presence of the Most High God right now in their homes. I pray, God, a supernatural, divine, divine outpouring in their homes right now in Jesus name that as we pray that your spirit floods their homes that will continue with them through this week that will continue with them till the next broadcast and even beyond that we pray that your fire that your power that your anointing will flood them so much that as they go this week there will be no spiritual walls because they are free they are free they are free yes. they are free they are free those watching say I am free in in Jesus name say I am free I am and free. I will not hit walls in Jesus name Amen. I thank you Lord for what you're doing in the name of Jesus to every person and in every heart that in all those who watch this will be touched and changed and stirred up for the things of heaven in Jesus name I Amen. thank you Lord hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> Well, we praise God for what He's doing in this place and what He's done in this place this evening. We thank You, Lord, for the freedom. We thank You, God, for the anointing. We thank You for Your abundance and Your provision. Even this week, God, the amount that of testimonies that are going to come in on this next broadcast, I pray are full and abundant, that the entire broadcast will be so full of testimonies and te after testimonies of all God is doing in the lives of Your people this week in Jesus name Amen. hallelujah we thank you Lord Woo! well we love you all God bless you thank you for joining us and watching with us on this broadcast on stir on Sunday stirring and uh, make sure you like our page make sure you have if you haven't gone on to YouTube and like the broadcast there and subscribe there do it today share it with people you know get pastors involved because we're really serious about uniting the body of Christ and we're going to share more of what we're going to be doing um, on Thursday I'm thinking we're going to share what more more we're going to be doing um, in preparation of August when it comes in and what ways we're really going to impact this city it's going to be powerful so you don't want to miss you don't want to um, to, to miss next, this coming Thursday as we get ready to finalize that before we um, go to Tampa don't forget to tune in next week uh, we won't have our regular regular scheduled times but we'll be 
uh, broadcasting at various times throughout the week. So just make yeah. sure you're paying attention to the page. So. Yep. Keep your eye out. If you don't, if you haven't done so already too, I know there's a way you can turn on notifications. Yeah. So you are notified when we go live right. so that you don't miss it and you'll be able to tune in and chime in. We'll also try to do like, like I typically do going live in five or something like that. We'll try to kind of give you a heads up as much possible time notice as possible, but be ready because it's going to be powerful and make sure you like, share, pray, you know, um, and get the word out. Share. I want to see at least 10 shares today. Come on. At least 10 shares. Basically one per person that we're... <laughs> one per person. Of the, no, there, yeah, there's been more like than 10. 10 but more, a, a, if everybody can share, I would say at least three. Find three people in your, in your friends to... Um, to go on there. Dave, we'll be live on YouTube once we get the equipment to yes. simulcast both. You have to buy special like software to be able to broadcast simultaneously on Facebook Live and YouTube. So yeah. it's just going to be a little while till we can get. Yeah, it's roughly about six hundred dollars. I think it is for that that piece of equipment. Um, you know, uh, to to hook up and then what it does is it lets us simul uh, uh, simultaneously uh, broadcast our streams and. Um, um, but we're we're just gonna put them up, yeah. Anyways, after they're we're done here, yeah. After we're Thanks. done here, we still put them on. We do post this video on YouTube. So if you have people that aren't on Facebook, we just uh, spoke. I just spoke with somebody yesterday that they they say they don't really get on Facebook, and um, they were excited to hear that we're on on YouTube. And um, so definitely, oh, oh yeah, welcome, God bless Dan. you, yeah, Dan. Dan, we pray you would just continue to be blessed for your birthday, even in the midnight hour tonight. <laughs> And uh, thank you guys for making sure you subscribe and um, on YouTube as well as yeah, here and notifications. Um, and and get like I said, I want to see at least ten shares on here. We want to get. We're almost at a hundred likes for our page Facebook here page. on Facebook. We're very close. I think we're at ninety eight following and ninety two or three likes. So I don't know who's following me that doesn't like us, but you better go hit like too. <laughs> And then, um, and then on on YouTube, we want to get to a hundred. We're only at about eight subscribers, I think, right now. But it's very very new. I know we'll get more out there as we start chiming in with others, um, you know, across the, the the globe here, across the uh, the nation too, and um, and as we start to, to broadcast live, I'm actually starting to look to see if we can broadcast live and notify you on Facebook, so you can just click on and start watching via YouTube because their quality is way better than um, when you broadcast through there versus uh, Facebook. So love you guys. God bless you guys. Steve, love you too. God bless you all. We'll talk to you on Thursday. And uh, make sure you um, email us if you have any prayer requests. Reach out to us if you've been praying for some freedom in certain areas that we can continue to lift up. And knowing that God has broke it today in Jesus' name. We love you all. Love you God guys. bless you. God bless. We'll talk to you soon.